Hi, my name's Vince, and welcome to another Trying to Fix video. In this video, we're going to be trying to fix an old Amstrad little notebook. So, let's open it up. Bought it from eBay, and the description on it was that it doesn't power up. Right, worryingly, it looks like there's some sort of issue with the screen there, doesn't it? I hope it's not a screen related fault. Oh, the keys feel nice. Right, it costs me £25 plus £4.99 postage, and it says here Amstrad Notebook Computer NC100 Vintage PC 1992 does not power up. And the description says here that it's in excellent cosmetic condition, but it does not power up. No mains adapter included. We tried a universal one and also batteries, but no joy. And the battery compartment is clean and overall condition is well worth repairing or use for spares. So let's get over to the blue mat and get some power into it and see what it's doing. Right, I've had a look at the back and it takes a DC jack in here. Six volts, but the center pin is actually negative. So if you have a look right in there, there you go. So I hope the last people didn't put the uh, positive in the middle because normally it's positive in the middle. Not all the time, obviously. But look here. I haven't put the batteries in yet, but it looks wet. And when I put my little finger in there and wiped it, it's still wet. And to me, <laughs> I've got a really bad sense of smell because I either have hay fever or a cold. But uh, to me, it smells a bit vinegary. But yet the compartment is clean here. So I'm just gonna get a towel and wipe that up. There you go, you can see it here. And here. Then this, of course, has just been wiped over with some sort of wet wipe or cleaning solution. And uh, when the lid was put back on here, no air got to it. Right, let's pop some batteries in, see what it does. Let's mix them up. Everybody likes mixed batteries. And let's turn it on. Now, is anything happening to that screen at all? Not sure if it's supposed to make like a startup sound or anything. We've got volume over here. Oh no, this is brightness. This is brightness here. Is that making any difference? Don't think it is. Memory card, parallel, serial port. Got a little uh, kickstands here. Battery, could it be battery related? What's it say here? Lithium battery, danger of explosion. Must only be replaced by a person having expert knowledge. Uh-oh. As described in the manual, the battery must be replaced by the same make and type only. I wonder whether, if this was dead, whether that would, uh, whether that would cause it to fail. So these should be three volts. No, that battery is dead. Could it be that? Right, let me get one of these, pop it in and see what it does. Here we go. Maybe if this like contains the kind of BIOS or whatever in here or the firmware, maybe that's why it's not turning on. So this is negative here. So this one's gonna be plus there. Yeah, a bit weird that. Doesn't feel that great, but maybe when this all goes on, it locks it all together. Right, let's see if it does anything now. No, so maybe that battery is just to keep the, uh, the date or whatever on here. Right, okay, well, it, it's not doing anything. I'm really worried about that weird burning on the screen because if this is not gonna make any noise to let you know it's turned on, then if the screen's gone, we're not gonna know it's on, are we? Let me have a quick look in here. Ooh, Amstrad chip. Let me zoom in there because some of you will want to know what that chip is. Amstrad UK A2. So if anybody doesn't know about Amstrad, you might have heard of The Apprentice with Alan Sugar. Well, it was Alan Sugar's company. 999-13663-037. Now, let's pop the batteries out and take this thing apart. 
and see if we can follow. I mean, I could put power in here to verify it's not working on there either, but it needs to work on batteries. So let's take it apart and then see what's what's going on. So this is six volts, and if you add up four times 1.5, that also equals six volts. Now, let's undo the screws. Because it looks like it's gonna be easy to take apart. While I'm taking it apart, let's give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive. And this month, the Massive members are kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, just gonna pop this battery out again, Chris Seal, Dorian from Hoover Lux Restorations, Felipe at mrkeebs.com, Dan Prutton, King Curd from Low Book Auto Sales, and DJVG. So thank you guys. If you did ever want to support these videos on Patreon, you can just look down in the description down below. There will be a link to the Patreon there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right, okay, hold on. Is that, is that good? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We're still stuck down the front here, but we've got a ribbon cable for the screen just here. So let's see if I can undo that. Is it just push fit? Oh, it's come out from the other end. Fine. And let's undo this one. For, oh, it has got a speaker. It's got a speaker with corrosion on it. I wonder, is this corroded then? Looks a bit corroded up here. Right, so this is the screen here with a load of chips on the back. Are the chips to do with the screen? Or are they something else? Are they just using this as like, you know, real estate space? Japan Citizen, H4062HPR. So Citizen, they're the ones that make the watches, aren't they? Right, what we got going on here? So where was the, so that's there. Ah, look, corrosion above the battery here. So the lithium cell must have leaked, possibly. Maybe it was the one before that one. Let's get rid of, I'm gonna take a picture because I don't wanna put these ribbon cables in the wrong way. Okay, so let's pop these out here. This is gonna be for the keyboard. Right, that's its own nice little unit. Something nice about this keyboard. Again, if you look down here, we have just some kind of damage. Can you see? But it just looks fresh, that's the weird thing. I'm still moving it around the place. Unless it is uh, alkaline from the batteries, leaking batteries. Now, is any more screws holding this in here? No. Right, okay. Pretty clean, just a little bit down here. Let's now see what is going on. Is this the side with corrosion? Look up here. Definitely splats of some sort of corrosion. How does this undo? Right, okay, it's held on by these nuts that go around the uh, serial port and the parallel port. So let's undo them, and then we can have a look at the traces. I'm gonna undo this ribbon cable. We've got a little crystal here. That's the power button, isn't it? Yes. Could be a problem with the power button. Should we check that first of all? So go to continuity here. So it beeps. And let's go across the top two. And press in. No, let's go across diagonals. And press in. No. Could I be lucky here? No. So it's working on diagonals. Let's try the diagonal this way. Yeah, okay. I wonder whether it's trace damage. What's nice about something like this is that 
the taking it apart, I mean the hard part's gonna be the fault finding, the taking it apart is just lovely. Well, when you're working on something like an iPad or something, for me, the hard part is just even getting into the thing because you're worried about cracking the screen. So that's what's nice about this, really. It's, uh, it would be unlikely to cause damage taking this apart. Right, that looks a little bit messy here, but I think that's just a coating on it. Yeah, because there's coating on all of them. Maybe there's a little bit of conformal coating on this board. Well, I can't see anything obvious. Initially, it doesn't look like there's anything wrong. So should we try and follow some traces around the place? All right, let's just come off. Let's go from the batteries and then see if it kind of links up to the power here. So meter in continuity. So from here, this is the negative and positive. So, oh, there we go. Yeah, right, so that's okay. So we can't see where the traces go, but look, we have two quite fat traces here and they look like to me they're going over to here so would the negative be just going off to something along here yes so that's going to the back of this one here now the positive is going to would it be going to here yes it is right so that's going to there now what's stopping you then from plugging in power here and charging up the batteries do you know what I mean? What's stopping? Is there anything stopping that from happening? Oh, we've got a fuse. We've got a little fuse here. Maybe the fuse is gone. Can you see here? 500 milliamps, 250 volts. Let's see what's happening with the fuse. Right, so the fuse looks to be here and here. Ooh, hello, hello, hello. I think the fuse has gone. Thing is, why has the fuse gone? Is that definitely the fuse there? So it goes down here to There's definitely the fuse here where my fingertips are. Here and here. Yeah, and look, that comes down from here. So it goes from here, yeah? And then, is that the center, center pin or is that the... Uh... Yeah, so that's the negative. So that's actually, that's actually the... Uh... No, that's the positive, sorry. The positive from here is coming up here. And then it goes down to here. But look, it's not passing through the fuse. Right, okay, so we need to pop a fuse in there. I haven't got one of them. 500 milliamps. Let me see what I've got. I haven't got anything that small, but what I am gonna do is, just for testing, I'm just gonna put some 0.02 millimeter. I know this isn't a fuse, but it's a tiny wire. Uh, I'm gonna put some of this in its place just for my testing. Now. Has the fuse gone because there was a little surge? Ah, hold on a minute. Would the fuse blow or not if this was put in the wrong way? Would that blow the fuse? See, this is what I don't know. Or is it if it's if the if it's gone to ground somewhere in here that the fuse has gone? That's I think that's what normally happens. So uh, let's the fuse is here. So now, if I was to go to this side and go to a ground, negative here, if that was shorting, that would blow the fuse, wouldn't it? Thing is, when we put power through it, it might short. Let me just see, there's a capacitor somewhere near here. Where's the capacitor? Underneath here. Yeah, so that's definitely, uh, that's definitely ground there. So that side of the fuse hasn't, uh, hasn't shorted. Let's see if it's given me a low ohm reading. Nothing was coming up on the continuity test. Let's just see what that reading is. So between there and the negative of the battery. Yeah, so we're in the mega ohms. So I don't think that's a problem. 
Uh, could you just pop down in the comments if, for example, somebody was to put this in with positive pin in the middle, would that blow the fuse or is that what you have like diode protection for? I'm going to zoom right in because I can't even see this wire. Now the problem with putting a wire in is obviously that it's not going to act like a fuse now, so another component somewhere else may blow. Tiny wire. Right, let's see if that's connected or not. Yes, it has. So now we've got continuity through the uh, through it. Let's just take this wire off. So you can get 50 of these in one millimeter. That's how small this wire is. My tweezers are not even gripping it, it's too small. I'm just gonna use my fingers. Right, okay, now let's roughly put it back together and see if anything happens now, whether we have any sound or anything like that. That'll do. And now let's touch the wires together. Yeah, 250 milliamps. I think we'll leave it at that. I'll turn it off. And now put this back on here. And let's see what starts smoking. Ready? So, we're on. Now let's just measure, first of all, because remember we haven't actually turned it on yet. Let's just see if I've got anything through here. I have, I've got 5.9 volts now. Five foot nine volts going through, through here. Right, let's turn it on and see what pops. Uh, I'm just going to turn it off a second so I can get this side without shorting anything. How am I going to do this? Uh, right, I can reach the switch there. And we're going to have to stick our head in the way. Let's zoom out a bit. Hopefully we can see something happening. Right, here goes. Turn it on. Right, and I'm going to turn it on now, turn it on now, there we go, lithium battery is low, please switch off and replace battery, fantastic, and does it turn off, yes it does, let's see if the contrast works, yes it does, look at that, Yeah? Right, I think we should put it back together and then I can go onto eBay and look at, see if I can get one of those fuses or maybe RS components or something. And uh, yeah, let's just see if the rest of it is working or not. I wonder why that fuse blew. I wonder why they bother exposing the chip here when it's soldered in anyway. It's not in a little not in, not in a little holder that you can swap out. So is it just a, a quick way of identifying what uh, what model it is? I'm not putting all the screws in. I'm just doing it enough to test. Right, let's see now. Is it going to turn on? Yes. Lithium battery is low. Please switch off and replace the battery.
maybe this is another fault. No, 3.2 volts. Right, is it uh, bad contacts here maybe? Let's lift them up a bit. No. Is there any way I can clear that? Right, I think we have to uh, look into this further. This got more interesting now. So, but that's definitely uh, that's definitely working there. Right, just to eliminate, make sure it's nothing related to batteries. I'm going to plug in this, and I've got it set to uh, center pin negative. So I'm just going to turn it on. Right, six volts is not drawing anything. Let's turn it on here. Ah, now look at that. Mmm. Right, let's turn that off, take that out, and now do my batteries again. Well, how weird is that? No, there you go. So it's not happy with the batteries. Maybe my batteries are slightly low. Let me do this a few times. Nineteen ninety. Right, so it definitely works when it's on the power and it's drawing only forty four milliamps. Maybe this thing isn't too thirsty on batteries. Right, let's turn that off. Now turn it on. No. So, okay, listen, maybe I haven't put brand new batteries in here, it wouldn't be the first time. Maybe I've been punished for putting in a mixture of batteries. So these are brand new batteries now, and let's just go to Volt, and let's see what's coming up. So where are we? We're going to be going from here to uh, here to in here. Can I get in there? There you go, 6.4. That's our sample. Please don't work. Ah, annoying. A bit confusing how when you put batteries that are slightly low in it tells you to change your lithium battery, doesn't it? Oh, here we go, excellent. It's not every time. Oh, that's good. Right, okay, just bear with me, I'm just gonna fast forward through this. So there I turned it on about maybe six times or so and two of the times it didn't work. I'm just going back on the power supply. Brilliant, I'm on power supply now and it's still saying it. Fantastic. Every single time it's saying it now. Excellent. Right, yes. That's really good. Let's take it apart and find out why it's doing this. Now that's more interesting than just a fuse. So is it gonna be corrosion related? Okay, now, so we need to concentrate around this area here. So let's zoom in. A point here and a point here and they go through the board. So this one here is gonna be the positive and this one here is gonna be the negative. So I suppose the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have actually got uh, voltage on here when we put the cell in. And the cell's definitely in the right way. Ooh. There's nothing there. Yes, there is. There is there. But I wonder how, seems a bit hit and miss. It's a bit of an annoying way of doing it. It's not as nice as just clicking it into like a motherboard, is it? I wonder is that contact there? We should be getting a contact on here though.
Hmm. Well, we definitely haven't got anything on this little bit here. So let's just scrape that back. But it should be still contacting through this end. I'm just going to clean up this side as well, just in case the very tip, actually the very tip is oxidized ever so slightly. It could just be that. If you have a look here, can you see there is a little bit of oxidization and they're the only bits that's really in contact with it because of this uh, bow that's been put on it. Right, that's going to make a contact there now. Yeah, now let's have a look at this one. Right, the positive is a little bit corroded as well. Right, okay, that's cleaned up there, so they should be making a contact now. Let's go back to looking at the, the rest of it. So that looks okay, and that looks okay. That goes back to a via that side, which comes up here, and then goes back through again, which comes up down this rail here, and back through here again, which I think is here. So we should have it on that resistor there. Here to here, and it comes up on this resistor, I think it was. Yeah, there we go. Right, I don't think there's any problem with that. Now let's trace the negative side. The negative's just everywhere, isn't it? So if I was just to go to here and here, yeah. I think the problem was corrosion on the negative bits there. So I'm gonna put it back together and see if it's working every single time. I'll just start filming again when it's back together. Apologies, I didn't show you any chips and I know some people like that. It looks like they're mostly NEC Japan. So let me just zoom in and I'm just gonna show you the chips on the board. Zilog. Oh, a Z80 CPU. Oh. Okay. Z80. I think that's been in a lot of things. Right, and that is it. Now, let's get this uh, back together. Right, we're back together. Let's see if cleaning up that those contacts have uh, made it work. Yes. Right, I'm just gonna do it a few more times. And I'm going to do it with a power supply. And let's do it with a power supply without the batteries. Yeah, I think that's it. I think it was just purely corrosion that was uh, making a, a bad contact. Sometimes it would work, mostly it wouldn't. Right, I am just going to mess around with this for a while and see what it does. And I have to order up a fuse as well. 
So I've bought some of them from eBay. You can see here that it's T500MA. This is the actual one that was in my board. This is the picture. And this is one that I found on eBay. So I've bought it there and it's £1.45 plus £1.20 postage for two of them. So I bought two lots because I like having a few spares in. You can see I've got it there. Now I wasn't sure the size because it didn't say the size. I know I've got T500 milliamps and it says 250 volts. But what I did is I went on to CPC. They also have them CPC for a lot less money. It's just that... I have to spend £17.50 to get free postage, so it's cheaper for me to buy them from eBay if I'm just buying this item here. I don't need anything else at the moment. But I looked up the data sheets, and sure enough, the data sheets here, and I've gone down, and the size is here. And that, to me, seems to be the same size as the one that I've got. So I'm happy to buy them from eBay. Right, let me just finish up the video. Wow, well, I must say, it is incredibly easy to use really really easy and that was their actual slogan i've written it down in here it says if you can't use it within five minutes you get your money back it's so intuitive right check it out so we have an option to do word processing calculator or the uh, address uh, diary type thing. So if I was to go to calculator, I just do function this one here and then use the keys, the green keys here, which it tells you to do. So two plus two times five equals 20. But look, let's go into word processing. Oh, function there. Now, list documents that I've already done. So green one here, Amstrad. Did you know what Amstrad means? Alan, Michael, Sugar, trading i've learned that today i never knew that that's what amstrad stood for get out of that and uh into here what else the specs so if we go to specs we have uh yeah so the, the phrase was if you can't use this new computer in five minutes you'll get your money back it was 199 pound in 1992 it's the size of an a4 piece of paper it's got 80 columns by eight lines parallel port for the printer anything else here uh, yeah, entry level laptops apparently at that time were costing more than two grand. So you can see if you wanted something just maybe for your lectures or something, rather than having to scribble down on bits of paper like I did, then if you had one of these, well, I wouldn't be quick enough at typing, but you could see how you could store it in here instead of having to uh, scribble things down on a pen and paper. So I can see how this would have been popular for £200 back then. You need to remember 1992. Now also check this out. This is this is. Interesting. So we're here. If I was to go to function B, can you see here BBC Basic? So uh, let's do a little bit of uh, my mate Vince real basic programming. So at uh, ten, print. Let's do a roll on that phrase. Hello, rat. Oh no, I did that wrong. Hold on one second. Hello, rat fans. And if I was to go to run, you can see there, it comes up there. If I was to go to uh, 20, go to 10, and now go to run. Ta-da! Going on forever. How nice is that? Stop there. I really like it. I think it is a nice little, uh, I think it's a nice little device. This seems well made, and... Uh, it seems very usable for back then. So I'm not going to show you the solder in, in, in the, off the fuse because you've seen I've ordered them. All it's going to be is using my solder sucker to suck the solder out, take the fuse out, pop the new one in and job done. I promise you I will do that. It's just not worth doing a revisit video for something like that. And I don't want to hang on to this video for the next week until that comes out. So I want to get this edited up. But what a nice little fix there. So all it was was a fuse that had blown and corrosion on that uh, lithium battery around that area there. So obviously the lithium battery had been, I suppose the original owners had taken the batteries out but left the lithium battery in and it must have leaked over time. What I'm slightly confused about is why the fuse blew because it's rated at 250 volts. So I'm thinking no matter what you put into here, it's not gonna blow. And why is it rated at 250 volts? Maybe if you could put that down below, then it would help me and others out who are also wondering the same thing. So that is it for this video. Let's just do uh, a little, uh, one second. There we go, I haven't said that in a long time. Thanks for watching, please subscribe for more how to and trying to fix videos. Oh, I've done that bit wrong. So uh, yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Why is that not coming? What am I doing wrong here? Oh, sorry, I don't need to do the thingy. There you go, you can see my typing skills are almost as bad as my fixing skills. There we go, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. Okay.